اوکے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اور السلام علیکم تو سب سے پہلے تو آئی ہوپ کہ یو آر آل ویل اور اپنا دھیان رکھ رہے ہیں جو کچھ ابھی کرنٹ پینڈیمک کی سچویشن ہے سب سے زیادہ امپورٹنٹ چیز اس وقت یہی ہے کہ آپ سب لوگ اپنا پوری طرح خیال کریں تو جیسے کہ آئی ڈالڈی سینٹ آؤٹ ان دا آن لائن لیکچر پلان سلائڈس کہ وی ول ٹرائی اسینشلی ٹو ہیو دی آن لائن لیکچرز آن دا یوٹیوب چینل تاکہ آپ لوگ سلائڈس کو ساتھ میری آڈیو کے سن سکیں اور پھر ہم ہر ہفتے ایک لائیو ڈسکشن ٹیمس کے اوپر بھی رکھیں گے تاکہ کوئی کیوریز ہوں تو وہ ہم ڈسکس کر سکیں آف کورس کہ یہ ہم سب لوگ پہلی دفعہ کر رہے ہیں تو اس میں کچھ ایشوز ہو سکتے ہیں تو ہم ایسا کریں گے کہ ایز وی گو لانگ وی ول ٹرائی ٹو میک دس پروسیس ایز افیشنٹ اینڈ آپٹمم از پاسبل تو لیٹس می جمپ اسٹریٹ ٹو مائی سلائڈ سو آئی ایم گیسنگ کہ اگر آپ لوگ اس آڈیو ایکسپلینیشن پہ پہنچے ہوئے ہیں تو یو آر آلریڈی ایٹ دس یوٹیوب چینل تو لیٹس موو آن فرام ہیئر سو بفور وی ہیڈ بین روڈلی انٹرپٹیڈ ان آر سیمسٹر بیسکلی وی ہیڈ بین گوئنگ تھرو آر کورس لرننگ آؤٹ کمس سو دس فار ہم لوگوں نے اپنی آؤٹ آف آر فور کورس لرننگ آؤٹ کمس ویڈ ایکچولی کمپلیٹلی کورڈ دا فرسٹ ون وچ واز دا لوکنگ ایٹ Um, stress and strain transformation um, and then after that we jumped directly on to our fourth course learning outcome or us mein ek humne uh, topic kar liya tha cover which was theories of failure um, primarily humne ye jump isliye kiya tha because the theories of failure that we had considered considered for ductile and brittle materials they were based on finding the principal stresses from stress strain transformation and then determining whether a material failed or not سو وہ اس کی کوہرنس زیادہ بن رہی تھی بٹ ناؤ دیٹ ویو کورڈ دیز ٹو ٹاپکس وی آر ناؤ گوئنگ ٹو موو آن ٹو آر سیکنڈ کورس لرننگ آؤٹ کم دس ون رائٹ ہیئر اینڈ اسینشلی دا فرسٹ ٹاپک دیٹ وی ول کور ان دس فار دس لرننگ آؤٹ کم از لوکنگ ایٹ ان سیمیٹریکل بیم بینڈنگ ناؤ بیسکلی دس از اے ٹاپک ویئر وی ٹیک Um, something that we already know from mechanics and materials one and then uh, look at a slightly more complicated situation of it so in mom one you had looked at simple beam bending um, and now in this case hum uski thoda sa complicated version ko dekhenge so let's dive right in and see ke what is exactly unsymmetrical beam bending okay so Yes, unsymmetrical beam bending. Let's have a little quick revision of um, MOM 1 uh, beam bending. So if you all recall, Mechanics of Materials 1 ke andar, hum logo ne uh, beam bending ke liye flexure formula derive kiya tha. Wherein the flexure formula, we know that the normal stresses in the longitudinal direction, that is sigma x. Matlab ye ke agar x axis is tarah define ho raha hai, then the normal stress in the x direction right sigma x so this is the stresses in these directions drawn as shown here they are given to us as uh, according to the flexure formula minus m y divided by i now this m here is the applied bending moment about the neutral axis y is the distance from the neutral axis so that the normal stress actually Um, uh, is directly proportional, uh, linearly proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. So that when we are the neutral axis, the more we are far from the neutral axis, the more our stress is highest. Okay? And then minus my divided by i, where i here is the second moment of area of the, of the cross-sectional shape. So basically, the normal stresses in the beam are dependent on the applied loading m. the distance from the neutral axis and uh, the um, uh, geometric a geometric property of the cross sectional beam cross sectional shape sorry okay um on top of this one more interesting aspect to note here is that there's a negative right here minus so iska kya matlab hua ki jab hum apni bending moment is tarah positive direction mein apply kar rahe hain about the about the neutral axis then it causes compressive stresses as shown here above the neutral axis and tensile stresses below ye agar aap apna right hand rule ko bhi use kare to curl your fingers in the direction of the moment 
सी राइट हेयर अगर आप अपना थम को पॉइंट करें इन टू दिस पॉइंट राइट हेयर जिधर मेरा कर्सर है एंड देन कर्ल द फिंगर्स ऑफ योर राइट हैंड अलॉन्ग द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द बेंडिंग मोमेंट उससे भी हमें यही पता चल रहा है कि हमारे कंप्रेसिव दे वो वो इन हो रहे होते हैं दे आर कर्लिंग इन द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया हेयर सो देर आर कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेस अबव एंड टेन साल स्ट्रेस बिलो द न्यूट्रल एक्सेस okay now a few things to note for this uh, uh, for this uh, simple beam bending problem i just want to highlight ke jo hum ye cross sectional shape ko mechanics and materials one mein dekh rahe the sabse bada thing to note is ke hum logo ne aisi cross sectional shapes dekhi thi which were symmetric i think i should move to a pen cursor probably hmm so we had looked at only symmetric shapes symmetric cross sectional shapes such that they had a axis of symmetry as shown here the y axis either pehli baat to ye dusra ye ke hamare paas ek cheez hai hum ye bar bar keh rahe hote hain ke hum moment applied this moment m applied about the neutral axis now what is this neutral axis basically um when we consider our uh, uh, our beam we have a surface within it or a plane within it called the neutral surface or this neutral surface has all the points on which there are zero normal stresses that is ke is 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 no is neutral surface ke upar jitne bhi points hain unke upar na compressive stress hai na tensile stress hai unke upar bending ki wajah se koi normal stress nahi hai Now, this neutral surface is clearly अगर हम इसको थ्री डी में इस शेप को देख रहे हैं दिस न्यूट्रल सर्फेस इज इंटरसेक्टिंग माई क्रॉस सेक्शनल शेप आई एम गोइंग टू ट्रॉय ट्राई टू ड्रॉ इट आउट आई डोंट हैव अ पेन तो ये मैं अपने टच पैड के ऊपर डायरेक्टली करने की कोशिश करी नाउ दिस न्यूट्रल सर्फेस इज इंटरसेक्टिंग दिस क्रॉस सेक्शनल फेस राइट सो द इंटरसेक्शन बिटवीन टू प्लेन्स इज ऑफ कोर्स वन एक्सेस ठीक सो वेयर द न्यूट्रल सर्फेस एंड द क्रॉस सेक्शनल क्रॉस सेक्शनल सर्फेस इंटरसेक्ट वी हैव आर न्यूट्रल एक्सेस एंड इन दिस केस उसको जेड से रिप्रजेंट किया जा रहा है सो दैट इज माई न्यूट्रल एक्सेस सो हम इस बीम बेंडिंग प्रॉब्लम जो हमने मैकेनिक्स एंड मटीरियल्स वन में की थी उसमें जो हमारी अप्लाइड मोमेंट थी दैट वॉज ऑलवेज एक्टिंग अबाउट द न्यूट्रल एक्सेस so there were these two important assumptions that we had in mechanics of material 1 which is number 1 that the cross sectional shape was symmetric and number 2 that the bending moment was being applied about the neutral axis okay so ab hum aage thoda sa chalte hain theek hai to ye cheeze hame thodi si clear ho gayi hai ki neutral axis kya hota hai aur there is an axis of symmetry okay great so as i've already mentioned we had these two main assumptions in mechanics mom one beam bending now this is true these two assumptions are true um for very simple beam bending problems in particular hum jab bhi ye symmetric shape ki baat kare to aksar jab hamare paas kuch cross sectional shapes ho common engineering beams ke wo hoti hain symmetric for example we have our uh, t channel this key cross sectional shape is a t now this clearly has an axis of symmetry um, where the y axis and then if you also have channel sections so this is a channel section ya phir a c section if you want to call it um this also is symmetric and it has an axis of symmetry now for these two channels agar hamare paas hamari applied moment is acting about the neutral axis then this is a problem jo hame mechanics of materials one ki techniques use karke analyze karna aata hai लेकिन दिस इज़ नॉट ऑलवेज ट्रू समटाइम्स वी हैव मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड शेप्स समटाइम्स वी हैव बेंडिंग मोमेंट बींग अप्लाइड अबाउट सम अदर एक्सेज सो इन मोम टू नाउ वी विल लुक एट हाउ वी कैन एनालाइज दीज स्लाइटली मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रॉब्लम्स राइट सो वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज कि हम आहिस्ता आहिस्ता सॉरी आहिस्ता आहिस्ता हम अपनी एक एक कजम्पन को रिलैक्स करना शुरू करेंगे सो दैट हम अब we will develop techniques so that we can analyze beams which have any cross sectional shape theek okay? hai not necessarily symmetric and also to analyze problems where the bending moment is being applied about any axis not just the neutral axis okay great so this is the this is the basically the objective of our 
um, uh, part of the course that we are covering right now. Importantly, what I want to clarify here is that the two assumptions that we have, we will relax them one by one. Relax so what we will do is we will first start with assumption one, that is that cross-sectional shape was symmetric and we will first relax them first. So first of all, we are going to look at um, beams which have an arbitrary shape. Okay, so they are not, they don't have to be symmetric. So let's let's first start with this one. Okay, great. So consider now that we have an arbitrary shape ki beam. Hai. This is some shape which is not necessarily symmetric, so there is no axis of symmetry. Now, to start to consider this problem, what we need to do is first start off by establishing a coordinate system. So, coordinate system we establish karne ke liye. Uh, we will remember that for most uh, engineering problems, uh, in particular in solid mechanics, we always have a right-handed coordinate system. So, we have our X, Y, Z system, which is our right-handed coordinate system. And we will use a particular um, convention use karenge, jis mein we will always have our X axis, this one right here, pointing out of the beam, like so. If you can see that x axis is bahir point kar. Bagar hame ye wala pata chal gaya hai x axis ka, aur then let's say we y ko bhi vertically kar dete hain for now. So then hame apna right hand grip rule use karke, we know how to find the z axis. All we need to do is first uh, take just our right hand, point all of our fingers in the direction of the x axis all of them in the x-axis, then curl them in the direction of the y-axis. So, you take all your fingers and point them in the x-axis direction, point karne, phir unko y mein curl karein. then the direction of our thumb will be pointing at our z-axis. Please yeah, try and satisfy yourself that this right-handed coordinate system is made here. Second important thing to note about this coordinate system is that we are placing our, our origin of the coordinate system at the centroid of the shape. Take your C jo hai right here. This is the, the centroid of my cross-sectional shape. Okay, so C ke upar origin rakha aur phir ek right-handed coordinate system ko humne draw out kar liya. Then for now, because I have told you that we will relax one and one assumptions, so now we will only relax our cross-sectional shape wali assumption. Ko relax kar rahe so for now, we are just assuming again that bending moment, jo hai, this one right here, M, is still being applied about uh, the neutral axis, which in this case is the Z axis. We will we'll discuss this later on. So for now, the bending moment M is being applied about Z, Mm, and then let's see how the problem uh, unfolds. So, सबसे पहले तो ये कि because we are in mechanics and materials one, uh, uh, sorry mechanics and materials two, and as we recall, we've discussed many times that in MOM we are always assuming that we are under the conditions of uh, static equilibrium, right? So we are not looking at dynamic problems uh, so far. So all of our problems that we look at, they are always in equilibrium. Now equilibrium means basically two things, right? So one is that the, the, our body is in force equilibrium and it is also under moment equilibrium. So what we can do to start to analyze the bending of this problem is to start to look at force and moment equilibrium. So our goal is to impose the equilibrium conditions on it. So in order to start with that, we actually we have to start finding what are the resultant forces and moments acting on it. And then of course they must sum to zero. So um, for our resultant forces, we are going to start to take our infinitesimal element first right here. If I take an infinitesimal element on my cross-sectional shape, ke upar, jiska area I am going to represent with dA, then I know of course that this dA ke upar ek force act karegi df thik, on just the infinitesimal area, which is given to me as the stress acting on that area multiplied by the area. So stress times area for that infinitesimal element. 
okay now where this infinite decimal ke ko humne ko general element liya right so hence why iske coordinates are just some coordinates at um, y comma z theek hai we could take it yeah we draw either hua hua it could be drawn here oh ab i'm going to try to draw this this might be too tricky but yeah you get the picture okay idhar bhi ho sakta tha idhar bhi ho sakta tha and so on and so forth so that's just the general um force infinitesimal force acting on a uh, differential element right now agar hamare paas equilibrium conditions hai then basically if we are uh, as i as i already mentioned then we have force equilibrium and moment equilibrium now we need to start thinking about this in 3d so force equilibrium in 3d and moment equilibrium in 3d now what do all of these things mean so let's first look at force equilibrium so force equilibrium in 3d hmm so clearly we have three independent directions the x direction the y direction and the z direction so force equilibrium must be imposed in all three of them right so the resultant force in the x direction the resultant force in the y direction and the resultant force in the z direction must all be zero but looking at this problem hame to already nazar aa raha hai ki is क्रॉस सेक्शनल शेप के ऊपर तो कोई फोर्स नहीं अप्लाई हो रही इन द वाई डायरेक्शन देर इज़ नो फोर्स इन द वाई डायरेक्शन एंड देर इज़ नो फोर्स इन द जेड डायरेक्शन द ओनली फोर्स दैट वी हैव इज दिस फोर्स राइट ये अगर हम एक एलिमेंट को देखें तो डी एफ या फिर अगर हम पूरी क्रॉस सेक्शनल शेप को देखेंगे सो दैट्स जस्ट द इंटेग्रल ऑफ डी एफ ओनली एक्टिंग इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन राइट सो ऑलरेडी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड हमारी फोर्स एक्वेलिब्रियम सिंप्लीफाई हो गई है दैट वॉट वी वॉन्ट इज दैट द रिजल्टेंट ऑफ ऑल दीज डिफरेंशियल फोर्सेज इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन मस्ट बी जीरो राइट ठीक है लेट मी रिपीट दिस सो लुकिंग एट फोर्स एक्वेलिब्रियम इन ईच ऑफ द थ्री डायरेक्शन एफ एक्स एफ वाई एंड एफ जेड we can already spot that there are only forces acting in the x direction so what we require is that just the sum of all the forces in the x direction must be zero that's number 1 number 2 what we have is k um uh, we have of course for total equilibrium we also need moment equilibrium so ab jis tarah humne force equilibrium ko three directions mein consider kiya let's also consider moment equilibrium in all three direction so moment equilibrium in all three directions means we require uh, the sum of moments in the x direction to be zero the sum of moments in the y direction to be zero and the sum of moments in the z direction to be zero so let's look at each of these in turn so moments in the x direction abhi moments in the x direction kaun si hain now I, what i want you to do please listen carefully because i can't actually show you right now but please again take your right hand theek okay? hai this is right hand grip rule again applies in the right handed coordinate system so moments in the x direction wo hain jinke liye aapka thumb agar hum vector mein represent kar rahe hote hain un moments ko if your thumb is pointing in the x direction so point your thumb in the x direction using your right hand and the curl of your fingers will tell you the direction of the turning effect of that moment to agar aap ye karke dekhein ki apni x direction mein thumb ko point kare and you curling your fingers along you will see that those moments wo to wo to it some 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 direction like so right Now this, please notice कि इस turning effect का क्या effect है ये तो हमारी beam को और से सुने इस 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 moment से along the x direction जो moment है उसका turning effect तो actually beam को twist कर रहा है right? It's twisting the beam. That is, this is the moment that causes torsion. So this is not a bending moment and we are not concerned with this. Uh, this bending moment. So एम एक्स की तो हम बात ही नहीं कर रहे इस प्रॉब्लम के लिए वी आर लुकिंग एट प्योर बेंडिंग प्रॉब्लम देर इज नो एम एक्स ओके इज दैट क्लियर एम एक्स वुड ओनली बी कॉजिंग कॉजिंग टॉर्जन नॉट बेंडिंग बेंडिंग सो वी आर ओनली इंटरेस्टेड इन मोमेंट्स विच कॉज बेंडिंग नाउ लुक एट एम वाई अगर आप इफ यू पॉइंट योर फिंगर इन दी 
Y direction. Point your thumb, sorry. Point your thumb in the Y direction and curl your fingers. You see a bending moment like so. Now this bending moment indeed actually is trying to bend our cross section, uh, our beam basically. So this is a bending moment and we are concerned with MY and we require that MY jo hai, uh, the bending moments, uh, the resultant bending moment about the Y direction should be zero. Right, so that's another condition that we now have in addition to our force equilibrium. We want the sum, the resultant in the y direction to be zero. And finally, similarly in the z direction, which is that z direction ke under, we have, if we point our thumb in using our right hand along the z axis, then the curl of the fingers is telling us that this is the bending moment to result in yoga. Now, in this case, mein we have to be a little careful. Now, in the z direction, we actually already have a resultant, sorry, we have an applied bending moment acting. So, essentially what we're saying that in the z direction, our um, resultant moment aegi by considering these infinitesimal forces, that must be equal to this moment m, right? from the equivalence of systems because this bending moment m ki vaja se ye internal forces arise kar rahi hain theek so it's, uh, it's this is this is not quite an equilibrium uh, situation this is basically uh, considering an uh, equivalence of systems situation where we're saying that this bending moment ki vaja se ye infinitesimal forces arise kar rahi hain to inki jo net moment hogi that must be equal to m okay great so we then end up getting these three conditions um, from looking at force and moment equilibrium which essentially are uh, as we've already looked at okay number one we require the um resultant force in the x direction to be zero so our resultant force in the x direction must be zero and of course the resultant force in the x direction is just given by um, the integral over the entire cross-sectional area of this infinitesimal force right so that is basically because we have an infinitesimal area and if we want the resultant उस उस इन्फिनिटेसिमल फोर्स का तो देन हमें उसके ऊपर उसको इंटीग्रेट करना है कि कौन से एरिया पे वो टोटल uh, एरिया क्या है जिसके ऊपर वो रिजल्ट सॉरी इन्फिनिटेसिमल फोर्स एक्ट कर रही है राइट सो दिस मस्ट बी इक्वल टू जीरो सो आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल दिस इक्वेशन वन एंड देन सेकेंडली एज यू रिकॉल आई सेट के वी द बेंडिंग मोमेंट अबाउट दी वाई एक्सिस मस्ट बी जीरो बिकॉज देर आर नो बेंडिंग मोमेंट uh, there is no bending moment acting about the y-axis. So, if bending moment about the y-axis ko consider kare, then we need to be a little careful. First, we need to look at our infinitesimal bending moment. So, if I this area, ko dekh rahi hun, then what is the bending moment acting on it? That is just the force times the moment arm from that axis, which is z. So, df times z, that would be the infinitesimal bending moment. And then to find the resultant bending moment, I just have to integrate that over the entire area so that I get Z right here, Z, the bending, the moment arm. This is my moment arm times the force, which was DF integrated over the entire area. Now again, notice that upper b there is a negative right there and there is a minus right here because of the direction of this force for the first equation and the direction of the bending moment for the second equation. Okay, so you just just have a look at the uh, kyun aata In any case, because they must sum to zero, it does not really matter. Finally, the third equilibrium equation that we have is that the um, net moment arising from this infinitesimal force, arising from the effect of the all the infinitesimal forces, must be equal to the applied bending moment m, because 
uh, that is what they arise from. So uh, that is that's an equivalence of a system um, uh, uh, problem, basically. So agar main is problem ko z axis ke along dekhu, that is if I reorient myself such that I'm looking at then a z axis pointing out of the screen for this problem, then I can see ki ye infinitesimal forces ke liye this time around the moment arm is actually equal to y and then so my moment arm pen why does it disappear every time so i have my moment arm which is y this time and again the infinitesimal force which is df that integrated over the entire area gives me my net moment from the infinitesimal forces from the infinitesimal forces so that that must actually sum to the applied bending moment m and this time around they're all positive because the direction of the uh, bending moment arising from the internal forces is the same as the direction of the bending moment if you if you consider them using the right hand grip rule Okay, so we have our three equilibrium conditions. Now let's see ke in ko fulfill karne ke liye hame kya karna hoga. Great. Okay. So as uh, as we've already noticed ke for now we had only relaxed the assumption ke hamari shape is arbitrary. Um, but the bending moment was still being applied about the neutral axis, which was the z-axis in this case. So, we know this from our flexor formula and from our one MOM1 analysis that the normal stresses for beam bending, they vary linearly uh, from the distance from the neutral axis. Thik? Such that you have a straight line when you have a stress distribution. Ko plot kare. And the largest stress, sigma max, occurs at the furthest distance away from the neutral axis, that is at C as drawn here. So if this linear variation and normal stress ki from the neutral axis, then I know that my stress distribution hai, that is just given by a directly proportional relationship um, from the distance uh, from the neutral axis divided by the maximum distance from the neutral axis and then multiplied by the stress which is maximum distance ke upar occur karta hai. that is ke wo ek linear stress distribution and I have expressed linear stress distribution ki expression ko is express kar sakti so now that I have my linear stress distribution for sigma I can substitute this into my equations 1, 2, 3 from the previous slide so let me do that First of all, let me start with my first equation the uh, equation for force equilibrium in the x direction and if I substitute that in here is sigma ki jaga taking out all my constants the constants being sigma max and c I can take them out of the integral then I only end up getting this constant right here multiplied by this integral of y dA now this integral right here, y dA, agar if you recall, this is something that we are already familiar with, right? This is actually the first, oops, yeah, it's going to be difficult, right? First moment of area, right? Oops. First moment of area or agar if you recall i had said ke humne apna right handed coordinate system ka origin centroid pe place kiya tha idhar right wo c was at the centroid so if you recall that this first moment of area for a cross sectional shape about the centroid is actually zero so indeed this y dA because humne centroid ke uh, along apne axis ko place kiya tha wo to zero hi hai yahi to centroid ki definition hoti hai ke that's the point about which uh, the first moment of area is zero so that we see ke okay yes great agar ye zero hai then this equation is indeed fulfilled so hamari force equilibrium 
फुलफ़िल हो रही है इस वजह से कि हमने अपना एक्सीज को अपने सेंट्रॉइड पे रखा था तो हमें इस 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 एनालिसिस से ये बात पता चल रही है कि इट इज़ नेसेसरी फॉर अस टू ऑलवेज प्लेस आर सेंट्रॉइड एट द सॉरी ऑलवेज प्लेस आर ऑरिजिन एट द सेंट्रॉइड व्हेन वी आर लुकिंग एट आर अनसिमेट्रिकल बीम बेंडिंग प्रॉब्लम ठीक है जी सो दैट्स वॉट वी गेट फ्राम द फर्स्ट इक्वेजन देन आई एम गोइंग टू जम्प टू माई थर्ड इक्वेजन एक्चुअली पहले and substitute this sigma into equation 3 equation 3 was that the um, internal bending moment about the z axis must be equal to the applied bending moment m so this was the equation and if i substitute my expression of sigma from here in here i get then we again taking out the constant sigma max or c ko maine bahar liya and then i have y being multiplied by another y so i get y square da up again this this also is a little familiar this y square da ka integral is now of course wo first moment of area this is my second moment of area so this is basically equal to my second moment of area which in other words we know is i so rearranging this i can see that my sigma max is equals to minus m c divided by i that is i get back my flexor formula matlab ye ki wo hi linear distribution ki jo ki jo expression hai we we basically we are getting that back for uh, um, uh, for an unsymmetrical shape as well that is we can actually use the flexor formula even for a unsymmetrical shape now we have to go back to our our equation number 2 and now comes the the more uh, so the the sort of the uh, the new part so uh, equation number 2 was related to moment equilibrium in the y direction so this is exactly what equation number 2 was and this time around if i substitute my expression for sigma in here and take out my uh, my constants then i get the constant outside but inside the integral i have y z d a okay so this equation clearly will only be fulfilled because this is a constant a non zero constant if this integral this new integral right here y z d a must be equal to 0 ठीक है इफ दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन इक्वेजन नंबर टू इज फुलफिल्ड नाउ वट इज दिस वाई जेड डी ए क्लियरली दिस इज ए प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द क्रॉस सेक्शनल शेप ठीक है इसमें सिर्फ क्रॉस सेक्शनल जोमेट्रिक पैरामीटर्स आ रहे हैं नाउ दिस इज एक्चुअली अ न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी आर इनकाउंटरिंग एंड दिस ऑफकोर्स हैज एज एज एन हैज अ स्पेशल नेम बेसिकली दिस इंटेग्रल राइट हियर वाई जेड डी ए is referred to as the product of inertia product of inertia right not the first moment not the second moment of inertia but the product of inertia for this cross sectional shape okay and we require basically for our unsymmetrical beam bending that this product of inertia must be zero ab there is a there is a there there is basically a way to ensure ki ye hamara product of inertia zero ho aur ye kis tarah hota hai this is essentially by how we choose our coordinate system so what we want is ki the when we are placing our x y z coordinate system we have to do it in a careful way taki jo ye y aur z axes hai na jinka product aa raha hai product of inertia ke andar unki kuch khas ऑरियनटेशन हो बेसिकली दिस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ इनर्शिया इज ज़ीरो अगर हम अपने वाई और जेड एक्सेस को चूज करें टू बी आर प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस ऑफ इनर्शिया फॉर द एरिया ना वॉट आर आर प्रिंसिपल एक्सीज ऑफ इनर्शिया ठीक है ये आहिस्ता आहिस्ता दिस विल ऑल बिकम क्लियर ठीक है जी सो वॉट आर दीज प्रिंसिपल एक्सीज वी आर सेंग के दिस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ इनर्शिया विल बी ज़ीरो if our y and z axes are the principal axes now what are the principal axes basically these principal axes are area are the axes about which 
the moment of inertia or the second moment of area of the cross-sectional shape is a maximum uh, is a maximum and minimum sorry let me I, this requires a little bit of explanation so recall that if i have a standard shape like so then this has a and i'm looking at an axis let's say right here theek hai ji aur iska main naam de deti hu a axis theek then this uh, shape has a moment of inertia about the a axis which is some value ठीक है बट इट्स ऑल्सो पॉसिबल फॉर मी टू टू हैव टू लुक एट द सेम शेप बट अलॉन्ग सम अदर एक्सीज लेट मी कॉल दैट एक्सीज एज बी नाउ इन दैट केस आई विल हैव ए डिफरेंट मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया और सेकेंड मोमेंट ऑफ एरिया एंड दैट विल बी आई बी और दिस आई ए विल बी डिफरेंट एंड दिस आई बी विल बी सम डिफरेंट वैल्यू ओके सो मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया हम लोग चूज कर रहे होते हैं अबाउट एन एक्सेस राइट सो अगर मैं आई बी की एक्सप्रेशन मिसाल के तौर पे लिखूं देन दैट ऑफ कोर्स इज द डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम दैट एरिया स्क्वेयर्ड ओवर द इंटीग्रेटेड ओवर द इंटायर एरिया दैट इज व्हाट माय आई बी इज वेर एज इफ आई राइट इट डाउन फॉर i a then that is of course the coordinates along the um defined by the a axis integrated over the entire area again and these two are different they're not the same isse ek value aayegi isse ek aur value aayegi so we are saying ki ye jo principal axes hote hain these are some special axes about which the moment of inertia is either a maximum or a minimum okay so that that is key here ke okay? these are some special axes about which the second moment of area or the moment of inertia is uh if we if we if we measure it or if we find it the moment of inertia will be either be a maximum or a minimum so hame apni asymmetrical beam bending ke andar kya karna hai in order to get our product of inertia jo pichle page pe defined tha this product of inertia to be zero that we want ke humne apne y aur z axis ko uh, uh apne principal axis ke along align karna hai now let's see how that will happen so first of all we there is a convention for this so the convention is ki we choose our z axis to be the axis with the maximum moment of inertia theek hai ji so that of course iska matlab ye hua ki y axis jo hai uske along minimum moment of inertia hai. ठीक है सो दिस इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू रिमेम्बर दैट आर जेड एक्सेस इज द वन विद द मैक्सिमम मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया एंड देन ऑल्सो रिमेम्बरिंग के सेंट्रॉयड पे तो ओरिजिन तो हमने सेंट्रॉयड पे रखा हुआ था अब हमें पता कैसे चलेंगे कि ये प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस हैं क्या है क्रॉस सेक्शनल शेप के लिए इसका बड़ा एक सिंपल uh, 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 हल है हल ये है कि हमें नोटिस करना है कि क्या हमारी जो शेप है वो सिमेट्रिकल है या नहीं अगर तो वो सिमेट्रिकल है ना फिर हमें पता है कि उसके प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस क्या होंगे द प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस फॉर अ सिमेट्रिकल शेप विल ऑलवेज बी अलाइंड पैरेलल एंड प्रोपेंडिकुलर टू द Uh, axis of symmetry that is one of its principal axes will be along the axis of symmetry and the other one will be perpendicular to it so for example if i am looking at this channel cross section then i know ke mera axis of symmetry is this one right ye this is my axis of symmetry for this problem so then i know ke iska ek principal axis is this one और दूसरा उसका प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस विल बी परपेंडिकुलर टू इट नाउ आई आल्सो नीड टू रिमेम्बर कि आई हैव अ कन्वेंशन साइन कन्वेंशन के जेड एक्सिस विल बी द वन विद द मैक्सिमम मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया नाउ रिकॉलिंग के मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया जो है अगर मैं जेड एक्सिस के अबाउट फाइंड करूं दैट विल बी आई जेड इज इक्वल्स टू आई जेड आई जेड इज इक्वल्स टू जेड स्क्वेड d a right integrated over the entire area so clearly wo axis jiske about 
एरियाज ज्यादा दूर हैं उससे उसका मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया ज्यादा लार्ज होगा तो अगर मैं अपने इन दो एक्सिस को देखूं इस इस वाले को ये जो हॉरिजॉन्टल एक्सिस है और ये जो वर्टिकल एक्सिस है आई कैन सी कि इस हॉरिजॉन्टल एक्सिस द वन रॉन एंड रेड हैज एरियाज जो उससे दूर हैं ये देखें ये जो इसके फ्लैंजेस हैं दो अदद दे आर फर्दर अवे फ्रॉम इट सो दैट ऑफ कोर्स दिस एक्सिस विल बी द वन विद द लार्जेस्ट मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया एंड हेंस वाई आई विल नेम इट माई जेड एक्सिस ओके और ऑटोमेटिकली फिर दूसरा वाला जो है वो वाई हो गया ऑल्सो नोटिंग कि इनकी डायरेक्शन कैसे डिफाइन होनी है याद रहे कि एक्स एक्सिस की कन्वेंशन है कि वो आउट ऑफ द बीम था तो अगर ये एक्स है और वाई जो है ये वर्टिकल वाला हो गया है तो फिर जेड की आपको खुद ही पता चल जाएगा यूजिंग द राइट हैंड ग्रिप रूल पहले फिंगर्स पॉइंटिंग इन द एक्स डायरेक्शन देन कर्लिंग इन द वाई डायरेक्शन then the thumb points in the z direction so this is the positive z direction okay ek aur symmetric shape ki example dekhte hain so if i have sorry i'll have to remove my pen jo marker laga hua yes so if i have my this um angle shape angle section sorry ab angle se- section ko bhi gaur se dekhein so this also has an axis of symmetry along this sorry along this along this along this inclined axis this is its axis of symmetry so hame pata hai ki principal axes jo hai for a symmetric shape are along and perpendicular so ek to principal axis ye ho gaya aur dusra ye wala hoga zaruri hai compulsory for a symmetric shape Now then we need to find कि इसमें से Z कौन सा है Y कौन सा होगा तो अगेन Z is the axis which has the maximum moment of inertia. So take a look कि कौन सा वाला axis है जिसके about areas ज़्यादा दूर हैं उससे and it seems कि ये inclined axis जो है उससे ही ज़्यादा दूर हैं areas distributed. So that is why that is my Z axis और दूसरा वाला becomes my minimum Uh, the principal axis with the mi- minimum moment of inertia so that's my y axis again x axis is pointing out of the beam great ab the question arises so this is okay fine for a symmetrical shape the principal axes are along and perpendicular to the axis of symmetry but what about uh, an unsymmetrical beam yahi to hum kar rahe the unsymmetrical beam pe to hum ja rahe the so for a for an arbitrary shape basically jiske koi axis of symmetry na ho uske liye straight forward you will be provided what the um uh, principal axes are so for example consider that we have this z z section now please this z section gaur se dekhein even though hame aisa lage lekin the z section is not symmetrical it does not have an axis of symmetry so in this case hum logon ko straight forward we are provided ke okay iska principal axes are oriented at some angle something like this so isliye our z axis becomes the one with the areas furthest away so if you notice ke z axis we are again jiske se zyada dur dur areas hain so the z axis becomes the one with the maximum moment of inertia aur dusra wala jo axis hai principal axis wo y axis hoga but we 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 don't really know how to hum we are not going to go into how to find these orientations but for an unsymmetrical shape we will be provided the direction of the principal axis <coughs> sorry and finally so if we know um if we followed all these steps basically un teen equations of equilibrium ko fulfill karne ke liye what what did we do number 1 was now let me get a different colored pen number 1 was that we had to place for force equilibrium we had to place the origin at the centroid that's number 1 number 2 is that we saw Okay, the flexor formula actually still holds true. The flexor formula still holds. Oops, sorry, issues with online and color blue. Yes. So number one was origin was at the centroid. 
Number two was we saw that the Fletcher formula actually still held true. And finally, to fulfill uh, the final equation, we wanted that our principal, um, our y and z axes must be aligned. Y and z axes must be aligned with our principal axes. And if we follow these three steps, that is, we place our origin at the centroid. Take it, use centroid pe place kia, number one. Then we align our x, y, and z axis in such a way that x axis out of the beam or y or z axis jo hain, wo principal along, axis ke along point. Kare. Then we can use this is key, we can use our flexure formula right here, right? Our standard flexure formula minus my divided by iz, noting that our moment thi wo z axis ke along. Hi uh, apply ho rahi thi. Great. Okay. So, ye to humne pehle ek unsymmetrical shape ka kar liya. Next, uh, and not in this lecture, this will be uploaded later. For now, this is enough. Next, we will relax this assumption ke ye M ko hum kisi bhi uh, arbitrary axis ke along apply karke dekhenge ke uska analysis kaise karenge. So, for now, let's stop with an unsymmetrical uh, yeah, arbitrary cross-sectional shape. Great. Okay. So I will ask for some feedback for this. So agar, uh, if you if you if you want some improvements, then please please give your feedback. Okay. Take care.